Hi everyone, it's Heidi from flutterbyheidi.co.uk and I'm Heidi Smith, I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator based in the United Kingdom and today I'm working with the lovely Merriest Moments um, stamp, die and hybrid embossing folder bundle. So this is a super photopolymer stamp set, um, really useful, um, lovely little poncettia, holly leaves, some sprigs and some um, great festive um, and Christmas sentiments. The dies cut out all of those lovely images as well as some fabulous other ones. So this is where the hybrid embossing folder comes in. You may not have spotted these um, in the uh, folder. We've got two. We've got the Art in Bloom and we've got this one here. And what this is, is it's a folder whereby it's a 3D folder so it is that thicker folder the, the outline die fits into the embossing folder. You pop your piece of card in and obviously close it up. Make sure you get the sandwich right. Um, and by that, I obviously, I mean, don't, um, you know, don't force it through your machine. I, um, I'm, I've got my, on the new stamping cut and emboss, it obviously gives you the, um, the sandwich. On mine, uh, my old big shot that I've got up here, um, I use the blue plate. But look what happens when you open this back up. So uh, I've obviously put I've, the die literally fits in one way, facing up. And when you take that out, you have got a die cut and embossed piece straight off. So I keep the one that does that in with the folder. Um, you've then got this other one, which is beautiful because it cuts out a detailed layer to go over the top. Um, of that and I haven't got my card to have it but that, I'm doing a card that uses that die cut layer um, that's a little bit of waste but you know hey you could always use a, a snowflake accents elsewhere and that is it's, it's as simple as that so we're going so I've die cut one of those I'm then going to do my um, accents I'm using oh, I should better show you the project, hadn't I? Here's me, here's me kicking off straight off, ah, jumping straight in, too excited. So here's the card we're making. So this is based on one, the original was by Diane van der Gallien. Um, it was in a, a sharing area called, um, th that we used to have. And I've just done a variation on this fold. And what it is, is it's a sort of accordion stroke concertina fold um, on the front, but you've got this extra panel on there as well just which you know when you're making a Christmas card for special people this one just looks lovely because as you can see you've got that fabulous panel detail on the back and a dimensional back attached to it of course I've used the poncettia to add an accent there and then on the front you also get the die to do this lovely layer so that's why I've obviously I've made the panel fit the layers on that as well so there we go. So um, what else have I used? I've used Tidings of Christmas DSP. So lovely DSP this, and this is a super card to use if you've got some scraps. So I've used two pieces of each of the designs. I thought I'd use four different designs. Um, and this is a DSP in the annual catalogue that actually, you know, I mean, I've used it for Christmas cards, but to be honest with you, with the designs on the back, you could use it all year round, um, you know, foliage always works well this is probably one of my favorites i love the detail on this paper and stripes on the back always useful again another one yes it is kind of christmasy if you like but winter birthdays are soft um soft succulent as well you've got misty moonlight in there um, and i've picked up on the other colors so that's evening evergreen so that's that lovely deep um in color dark green that we've got um, and soft succulent which again is the other uh, one that, that goes with that so that's the DSP I'm using I'll pop that to one side and we'll do our stamping so it's a photopolymer stamp set this means that if you use it with reddish inks it will stain don't worry don't panic um, it, it is normal for that to happen. So what you want to do is you want to stamp, um, I'm using Cherry Cobbler, again, picking up on that colour. Um, and you can do all of these, and if you use a bit of tape to hold in place, you want two of these, obviously I've already cut one out. Um, you want one of the berries, if you're going to do the design exactly as I have. And you'll see, using the Stampin' Pierce mat really gives a lovely clear impression on those. I'm going to add a bit of um, a bit of bumblebee in a moment, um, 
the leaves, the holly leaves, there are three sizes of holly leaf in here. So again, for Christmas batch making, you know, on the whole, I will do one of each. Um, so I can get all my dies on, pop it through in one go. Um, like so. I'll pop those out of the way so that hopefully I won't get myself too inky. And when you grab your dies, which <laughs> I've put to one side, actually while I'm talking, um, Cleaning your stamps, um, something I don't I don't very often do on camera, I probably ought to a little bit more. Um, I do try and clean my photopolymer off straight away. I use a mixture, my favourite is my um, stamp and scrub. But I have to say for photopolymer and for use with the stamparatus, I use my chamois as a quick clean. So what I will do is when I'm crafting as I go along, I will clean those up, hopefully, so that I don't get too much ink on projects, because that's just water. So all I'm doing there is just wiping and giving a quick clean to them. But what I will use at the end of a crafting session is my stamp and scrub. And the reason for that is I use my stamping mist, and that has got a conditioner in it. So that, that will help condition, in particular, your red rubber stamps, um, because you really, you know, you don't want that them dry, any of them drying out. Um, and you know, if you're not careful, you, you'll they'll deteriorate. And you know, when we spend, you know, money on quality stamps, we want to keep them in that quality condition. So, I've obviously I've done these, and then all I'm going to do is line up um, my poncettia. So, with this, you will see on the die that there's one that kind of pokes in a bit more than the others. And then I just usually just swizzle it round and kind of go, is that the right one? No, it isn't. So it's the opposite one. So there we go. So you can see that that should just hug your um, your image. I'm using a little bit of post-it note tape. That's probably what I found to be the best of all for keeping dies in place. Um, and again, you know, if you want to be frugal, that's absolutely fine. You won't find me arguing with you. Um, and with the holly berries, you'll find one end is slightly more pointed than the other. So just, again, line it up and a little bit of post-it note. This means that you can pop them through in one go. So each time you pop through your um, die cutting machine, you're going to get, uh, apart from the flat, the poncettia, you'll get one um, kind of complete cards die cuts. So just pop them all on there like so and you'll see I've just left enough space between them so that my dies aren't going to move. That's why I use post-it note tape as well. Um, on this one there is a die cut for the centre of the poncettia. It's teeny tiny and life's too short. I'm not using that one. All I'm doing with my poncettia is grabbing a bit of bumblebee and in fact I've actually got a die cut one here. You'll see die cut and a bit of bumblebee in the centre. That's fine, you know. Um, you know I me, mean? just just you know, keep keep it real, keep it real. You don't want to do, you know, you don't have to do loads and loads. Um, but if you want to add those layers in, um, absolutely perfect. Um, and you, you know, you can add as much um, as you want uh, to those. So I'm just going to pop those through, and those will go through um, in one pass. Just with a standard sandwich for, for thin dies. Um, she says you can you can probably hear me ferreting. That's <laughs> ferreting to find the, the relevant plate. Okay. I have to find it. I'm using a really old one. If you saw the state of this one, I'm not even going to show it on camera because it is that bent. Right. Okay. You're then. Here we go. Uh, I use magnetic platform as well, um, but that's you know, see, really old. There we go. And there you have all of those will just pop out and give you your layers. Okay, so we've got our holly leaves, our berries. Pop those to one side. There's some berries. 
ready to go. Last bit, I need to stamp my panel. So I've die cut one of those lovely panels um, with it as well. So this is the panel for the very front here. So here I've got one of my die cut panels. I've then got a piece of my um, cherry cobbler as well. So this panel is slightly smaller, so it gives us um, a, the panel for the front here um, is, it is about, so it's six by eight centimetres. And then, um, so six by eight centimetres, you want a piece that is 13 by 8.5, scored at 6.5. And then that's going to create a layer for the front. So I just need to stamp that with my sentiment. So again, thinking of this festive season, you know, if you've got people who, who, are, who don't celebrate Christmas, um, this is a perfect one here. There you go, and so that fits just beautifully onto that uh, die cut. And I've deliberately put it towards the top so that, that gives me space to decorate at the bottom. Okay. So now what we want to do is cr to create our card base to add our layers to. So I'm going to use some, uh, uh, you know, as I often do, this one has got a cherry cobbler base. I'm going to use a evening evergreen base. So I want a piece that is 14 and a half by 28 and a half. Um, so that's five and three quarters by 10, ooh, 10 and five eighths. I will double check my, can I read my own writing? 10 and 3 eighths. Um, I will um, pop these dimensions all on, onto my blog um, so that you can, um, you can easily follow along. Okay, so on the long edge for this then, I'm, so I'm doing this in centimetres. So the first score, la score is at 10 and a half, which is 4 and 1 eighth, uh, sorry, 4 and a quarter. Um, I've then gone to 15 six and uh, three eighths at 19 and a half um eight and a half and at 24. i haven't written down what that one is so it's going to be around about nine and three eighths by looks of it i will double check those one thing i do um, and I'll sh i've shared this before when i do a fancy fold I actually do it on just copy paper to start off with so that I double check all my measurements and I get familiar with how to fold it and do the scoring um, I then keep that with the measurements written on um, for future reference and I've started doing that because it really does help me think more creatively because rather than looking at one that I have already created when I get kind of a bit sidetracked by whatever papers I've used I just look at it for the shape and think oh what would that suit um, I'm now reinforcing burnishing these score lines um, I'm just making sure those line up on the side as well before I zigzag them so fold it just over half fold the first one back and burnish, fold it and then fold that one back as well. So then you've got that concertina panel. The next bit that we do is actually to add our die cut layer. Now the only thing I would say with this is all you want to do is make is you're going to keep it within the, the dimensions of the, um, the, the base and, tr and it's keeping it square. So what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to use wet glue um, because obviously that will give me a little bit of wriggle room. Um, she says optimistically. So I'm just going to put some glue on that centre panel and then just grab your ruler. I mean, if you've got a right, um, a right angled a ruler, that would be great. So I'm just popping that in, but very quickly, I just want to measure so that's two and a half, so at about an inch in. 
to make sure that's reasonably square. So I'm keeping it within here and within the score line and then popping that down. Because what you want to do is obviously have your, your panel so that it's nice and square um, on the top. So we've added that. The next one is to add in our DSP layer. So as I've said, I've just cut four pieces that are 14 um, by four centimetres. So that just gives a bit of a border. And decide which one you want to go on the front. Have I left that one at 14 and a half? Okay. Um, uh, just half a centimetre off there. If you wanted to leave them at 14 and a half so that you just had the border um, on the sides, that's fine as well. So I'm just going to have a look and kind of go, I want so the dark green, so I want a lighter one on the front. And I rather like, there we go. Just have a play around. Once you've decided which way you want them, as simple as anything, you're just going to add some seal to those and just centre those on your panel. So I say on, on my original one, I kept them at 14 and a half so that they came all the way down to the bottom. On this one, I'm just showing what it'll look like with um, with that little border around the edge. Personal preference. Um, and also whether whether you you know whether you want how easy you find it to centre your layers. So I'm, and so by you I mean I've done this to use some of my scraps. So I've got a few pieces which were not quite big enough to get two of two out of so do you know what? I'll just get one out of those. So there we go, starting to come together. Next we want to create our panel for the front. So you're going to be sticking this on the left hand panel. So all I'm going to do is pop that on there. And then this panel is going to adhere to, let me show you, I'm going to put some on both edges, but just on that, you can see, I'm just doing it on that far neat edge. So I'm in effect centering it over that panel there on the back. You see, I've opened it out, close it up, close it and close it make sure you're happy with with that you've used wet glue if you've used wet glue you've got a bit of wriggle room and there we have our panel and it just covers and if you're tall and certainly gives you can always measure to make sure that you've got it nice and straight so now all that remains is to add our different layers on now I always like as you'll have seen to create a bit of dimension on these so I'm just going to curl those with my bone folder I've got all the pieces that I want and I'm going to come in with my stamp and pierce mat and some mini dimensionals to this last little bit. So just take your bone folder and just shape those slightly. So pop your dimensionals onto the back here. So one in each corner and one in the middle, just to keep that supported. Not very really chalkative today, not very really, not really chalkative, not very really talkative today. I wonder why, I don't know. One of those days, perhaps I'm concentrating. Make a change, wouldn't it? Concentrate might actually get it right. So that that piece is going to go onto that front panel, like so. So now we can add our leaves. Um, and with the leaves, all I'm going to do is add again, add these on with dimensionals. So pop my I'm popping my largest leaf with a couple of dimensionals just aware of where they're going to be 
and then I'm adding my second leaf with a bit of wet glue onto the front there to kind of create my spray. So, and I'll probably add my, um, that might help if I let that dry first. And I pop a dimensional, which is just perfect size for mini dimensional on the back there. My holly berries. I'm just going to take those backs off the dimensionals. Like so. And that can go on there and then I can just add a little bit of glue onto the back of that of the leaf to pop it underneath and add that in flat and then to create my uh, flower again no again this one I'm using my wet glue for and just popping because I want just a pop of colour on the inside um, I just wanted something to sort of liven it up and then again just having curved those leaves just bend them back slightly and then offset them until you're happy with your poncettia and there you have a lovely pair of Merriest Moments cards special cards for special people at Christmas which do you prefer? Are you team Evening Evergreen or team Cherry Cobbler? Or do you like them both equally as much? Um, let me know which you prefer. Uh, but the hybrid embossed and folders, I think you'll agree, just create a fabulous panel. So, thanks for watching. Do come back and see me again soon. And please subscribe to my channel. It really does help my boost me up and hit the like button too, because again, that just helps, um, gives, me a, gives me a boost. Thanks for watching. Bye now.